right, guys. So the last few videos, I've talked a lot about circular polarizers and how I use them at waterfall photography. But one thing I haven't talked about is how much I dislike having to screw one on the lens and then take it off because the, uh, you know, the possibility of maybe misthreading that filter, or if you're wearing gloves, it's cold, it becomes impossible to be able to, to accurately thread that thing on. Another thing is if you're rotating a circular polarizer, you could be unscrewing it and not even know it. And I have actually lost one in the sand at the beach by doing exactly that. I thought I was just turning the polarizer and I was removing it and it fell off, landed in the sand and grit got into the, the ring. Pretty much ruined the filter. It was, there was no coming back from it because the, the sand was very, very, very fine. Um, so having a filter system that you don't have to screw on and screw off and makes it easy to use with gloves was very, very interesting to me. And so free will has come out with a magnetic filter system. And this, there's no screwing it on or screwing it off. It just snaps on and it snaps off. And I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. Now I do wanna start off by saying that Freewell did not send me these. I bought these with my own money. I am not um, sponsored by Freewell. I get nothing for doing this review. And I haven't actually used them yet. I just got them. I'm getting ready to start a nine day landscape workshop. And I plan on putting these through their paces during that nine day workshop. I'll be doing waterfall photography. I'll be spending time out at the Oregon coast. And so I will be using each and every one of these filters at some point to give a really, really good review, um, which you will see at the end of this video. Anyway, let me show you what you get in the box and what these things look like. So, it's a really nice box. It's very, very sturdy. It's not cheap at all. It doesn't feel flimsy. And you get a, basically this is an empty magnetic ring and you would attach this to your camera lens. And then everything else would just snap onto this, okay? So this is your, just your blank ring, magnetic holder, if you will. And then you've got the, uh, Oh, it's in there pretty good. Hang on a second. Let's see. Here we go. So then you have your filter itself. And even the, the case is, is magnetic, right? So that's kind of just really cool. So you, you get your filter and it comes, which I thought was pretty uh, amazing. It's a little bit hard when it's not on the, there we go, when it's not actually on the lens. It's easy when it's on the lens because the magnetic magnets really hold it. But this is a UV filter. So you got a UV filter if you like to use it, and this is magnetic. Now this has threads. This would actually thread onto your lens and would stay on if you're kind of a person that wants to use a UV filter. I probably will not use it and will just use the empty um, magnetic holder that I just showed you. And then you'll have, in this case, this is a 10 stop uh, neutral density filter, okay? But um, I got some step down, or sorry, step up rings uh, so that I can use it with a variety of my lenses. And just also to say that uh, Freewell, each of these come with a lifetime warranty. I'll have links in the description below uh, about the filter so that if you wanna go to the website, you wanna look at them, you wanna buy them, I get absolutely nothing from this at this point. So, um, you know, feel free just to click on those links and check it out after you watch the review. So we're going to bop ahead to the future and we'll start talking about how well they did when I was out on tour. So I've been using the, uh, the free will filters now for a few weeks and, um, overall I'm very, very pleased, uh, with them. Now, if I could just figure out how to put this on my tripod, there we go. That would be even better. Um, so, it's got some pros and it's got some cons. There's things I really like about it, um, mostly uh, pros. Um, and the cons I'll get to in a little bit. But basically, um, you know, when you're in the summertime, I mean, this is absolutely really, really, really simple. So right now I've got the filter cover on, now it's off. 
<laughs> it's on and it's off. All right. So I, I basically keep my circular polarizer on the lens all the time. Uh, and I just pull it off with the lens cap when I don't. So um, I'll take the, the lens hood off. And to get the polarizer off, it's off, on, off, right? You just rotate it and it works fantastic. So uh, if I wanted to take both off, I can get both off just like that. It's that easy uh, if I don't need it. And then I will slip this into my, my, uh, my camera case into a little filter pouch. And that protects this from getting scratched. And this is a good protection for the front of it. So it really is just that simple. You do have to be a little bit careful uh, when you just want to pull the, the, the filter cap off. But again, it just takes you know five seconds to learn the, the right touch to get it off and you're good to go. Now I really was waiting on the Breakthrough filters to come out because Breakthrough makes some really excellent filters and they had a magnetic one, but they've been sold out and they are supposedly revamping their entire product line. That was over a year ago and there's been absolutely no movement. I've signed up for email notifications, hadn't heard anything. And that, so that's why I kind of went with the Freewell system. And I am really, really glad I did. It's not, ex it's not expensive as far as filters go. These are $99 a piece. And again, I'm not sponsored by Freewell. I have, I paid for all of these filters with my own money. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, pause this. So now I've, uh, I've put on some gloves. These are pretty thin gloves. Uh, Cause that's where one of the things I've always hated about the screw on type filters or even worse the big large rectangular ones is when you've got gloves on in the winter time trying to screw that on or faff about with a giant holder or something that has to be attached the odds of dropping things are just exponential the colder it gets it just it's just probably going to happen so with these thinner gloves on it's going to be a little bit trickier to get it off but it still beats trying to screw it on so again i'm going to take there's it off, that's the cap, cap back on, off, on. Now let's see if I can take that off. Now I'll take the uh, circular polarizer off. There we go, and back on, off, and back on. Again, it's a little bit trickier because uh, you know you do have gloves and you can. It's it does require just a little bit, not a I wouldn't say effort, but a feel that you have to get to do that. But again, just rotate it, and there you go. So so far we're at a win-win-win as far as using the filters, you know, actually attaching the filters and taking them off with gloves on. So I've got one more test to put these things through. So there's one more test I wanted to do with the filter system. These are my winter gloves and these are very thick uh, and they're designed for uh, photographers. Now they do have the little flap so you can, you know, pull your thumbs out and your finger out. So with this, it'll make it a lot easier uh, as well, but I wanted to try it first with the gloves protecting my extremities, you know, protecting those digits. So let's see how easy or hard it is to get these on and off using these big gloves. There's the cap. Rotate the filter. Off. On. Off. On. Rotate the filter. Lens cap. On. This is with everything covered. Now that time I pulled everything off 
So it's again, it's it's a hard to feel. I mean, these gloves are really thick. So uh, there we go. There's just the cap. So I would definitely rate doing it this way with these gloves on by far the most difficult, but still not impossible, uh, and not nearly having to deal with the you know, trying to screw it on and make sure it's not cross threaded and that you're actually doing something when you're, when you're turning that filter, right? Um, uh, it does, again, it requires just a little bit more effort to get it and that's with the, the fingers covered, right? And again, uh, turning the filter is just not a problem whatsoever. And it's a circular polarizer, this is what I would do. So usability for these, in the summertime, I give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, in, the, in the wintertime with light gloves, I get it, again, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. And then with these big gloves, it's a little bit harder. I'd give it an eight out of 10, just based on, on just having to, it's, it does require just a little bit more patience and the odds of you pulling the whole thing off uh, is obviously a lot higher. But even that, it just clicks back on. It's not an impossible thing to do. It's, it's just not nearly as frustrating as having to deal with the traditional screw-on type filter system. So now we need to test and see about how well they actually perform. So I'm gonna do a test uh, with, without a filter. And then I'm gonna do the same exact exposure with uh, the circular polarizer and what we'll be looking for is any kind of color casts or vignetting uh, at wide open usually when you're not wide open when you're as far as your your lens when you're zoomed in at all then there's no vignetting so I'm going to be shooting with uh, the 24 to 105 at 24 then I'll put on my 16 to 35 at 16 millimeters and we'll try the neutral density. I've got a neutral density, I've got a 10 stop filter, and we're gonna try all of those and see if we get any color cast or vignetting at those wide, wide angles, okay? Okay, so here we are in Lightroom, and we're looking at the 24 millimeter shots. The one on the left is with the circular polarizer, the one on the right is with just the magnetic, magnetic holder ring uh, on the lens. First, obviously, you're going to see is there's some vignetting that's occurring with that circular pol polarizer attached to the lens. And there's even a little bit, let me zoom in here, there's a little bit that's even happening with simply the, the magnetic uh, holder on it. Um, so let me zoom in and pan over here to it. So again, this is pretty significant as far as how dark it is, but again, it's at 24 millimeters. By zooming in just probably to 26 millimeters, it's going to go away or cropping just the smallest amount. So that's definite, uh, definitely a con when it comes to the circular polarizer on the 24 millimeter Sony lens. As far as color casts go, I see nothing. It looks great on both. Again, the one over here on my left, uh, let me uh, zoom in. This is the left, this is with the polarizer, the one over here on the right is without. And as I look at the yellows and the greens, it looks great. The clouds and the fog was moving in and out. It was a pretty foggy morning that I did this. So there is a little bit of fog, but again, we're just looking at color temperatures. And I'm not seeing anything of note at all between these two photographs as far as color casts. So now we're gonna to go to the 16 millimeter uh, lens. So this is the 16 millimeter and the one on the left is with the circular polarizer. The one on the right is without. And I'm very surprised that there is no vignetting either in either circumstance with maybe the slightest with the polarizer on. So this is 16 millimeters with the polarizer. And let me go up here to this corner and just the very, very slightest little bit of darkness, but nowhere near as bad as it was on the 24 millimeter uh, lens, which is really kind of odd. Uh, usually, the wider those angles, the you know any little uh, obstruction on the edge of those lenses is going to pull it in. 
but this is fantastic. It looks really, really good. So vignetting is not a problem at all. It's 16 millimeters with the circular polarizer. And as far as the color cast, let's take a quick look. I got a feeling we'll see about the same thing. We're looking at this white tree, the yellows, the greens. As I look around, And I think it looks fantastic. I am not seeing any issues of a color cast with either one uh, with the filter compared to the one without. So let's take and compare the 10 stop. And last, we're going to compare the 10 stop against no filter. So on the left is no filter at all. This is the 16 millimeter with just the filter holder on, the magnetic filter holder. The one on the right has the 10 stop filter on. And again, no vignetting at all. Let's uh, take a zoom in real quick here and we'll take a look at these corners. Um, I didn't expect to see vignetting here as I didn't on the circular polarizer. So again, let me zoom in. And the corners look fantastic. I see no issues whatsoever in these corners. So we'll just pull this down and we'll take a look to see if we see any color cast between the two. Because usually when these 10 stop filters, they do a lot of, it's pretty dark, and the opportunity for some type of a color cast to creep in and to keep that absolutely neutral is very, very difficult, especially when you get at a price point of just $99, which is what these cost. But I'm looking at this, and again, Let's see, looking at the, the tree, the yellows, the greens, comparing from left to right. Again, no filter and a filter over here. And obviously the sun has moved a little bit and there's clouds coming in. So there's gonna be a little lightness and darkness areas, but again, we're just looking at color temperatures. And I, again, I'm not seeing anything that would warrant any concern whatsoever on, on any type of color cast. So that completes the review of the Freewell Magnetic Filter System. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you got something out of it. I am definitely going to be switching to the Freewell Magnetic Filter System full time. I'm not going to return any of them. I think it's fantastic. There was some vignetting at the 24 uh, millimeter end of my 24 to 105 lens. And um, that is not a deal breaker for me simply because I always shoot a little wide and I pretty much always uh, crop my images just a little bit. And even if I didn't, I could easily fix that in post. Overall, the ease of use uh, far outweigh that little bit of vignetting. There's no color cast, which would have been a deal breaker if there was any type of huge color shifts in the uh, when I use the filters. But even with the 10 stop, I didn't notice anything at all. So um, it's a, an excellent system. I think it's well made. Highly recommend it and definitely check it out. Um, if you got something out of the video and you enjoyed it, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you can uh, be notified of any future videos that I release each and every Wednesday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.